the saddle is now glued onto the pattern itself so when that dries in a few hours and I'm going to mill some of the this material off the top and that'll level it out and then I have to fill this with a I'm going to put a fillet in there and here and blend this in just a little bit right down here and then uh, that'll be done now I want to talk a little bit more about uh, putting fillets in this is how you pronounce it uh, it's not the fish but we say fillet and a fillet is just putting in a, a radius on any internal uh, surface could be round or square this is the head that I made and and uh, I made a little orn ornamental knob out of plastic I'm not even sure what kind of plastic this is but just turned it and filed it on the lathe and put it on with a brad right in the center and, and this is tapered on the outside so that's going to be the head that goes on the top and this is the head or bottom and I'm going to put a fillet in there in just a minute now materials for making fillets uh, they don't have to be bought but these are the two biggest supply houses in the United States to make pattern or sell pattern making supplies Freeman Supply and Kent Collins they have websites and they sell all of these materials but there's different kinds of materials to use for a fillet and I'm going to just use common bondo but you can use leather fillets or wax fillets or even wood fillets on the straight uh, if you're going straight but if you're going around this is a piece of wax fillet but it's a very small fillet and it's really like a quarter round and that can be just installed with a hot you see how nicely it wraps around if that's showing up and you use a hot fillet tool and these are homemade ones but you can buy these commercially too it's just a ball on the end of a rod and that would have to be heated on an alcohol flame not too hot but just hot enough so that it would melt that wax into the corners and that's a good method to use and they make leather and plastic in strips and various sizes that can also be used so those are nice materials uh, the uh, I believe it's the Freeman company yeah this is the Freeman company here this is a set of uh, uh, fillet uh, shapers and they're nothing more than pieces of spring steel with various radiuses on the end uh, from large to small and all you do is put your body putty on and you would uh, scrape that around I use one of these or I simply wipe it with my finger which is kind of messy but uh, it's a good method to use and that's what I'm going to use here presently if you use uh, one of these tools or one of these flat I guess they're like a spatula have yourself a little can of lacquer thinner to dip it in and then some uh, rags to wipe it off because if it gets sloppy it's it's a mess you know this is kind of a hard material after it uh, cures and uh, you don't want to have any extra I did run a little sandpaper around here just real quickly and and uh, you know that looks pretty good as good as it needs to be but if you examine any castings that you may have you're going to find that they always have a fillet in there for appearance and so you don't get shrinkage all right I've mix, mixed up a batch of this polyester body filler here or bondo and all I'm going to do is wipe it in with my fingertip a little sloppy you know you only got a couple minutes to work on this and depends on how fat your fingers are that's going to determine what your radius is in there and once you've got enough in there wipe off the excess and just wipe it around like that and you're going to get a reasonably good fillet kind of like frosting a cake or if you want to use uh, one of these just move that around I'm kind of rotating it as I go and uh, that does a nice job but we're going to have to go in there and wipe off a little bit of the excess working really really quickly you don't want any of this sticking up there or that'll be an undercut 
So we're going to wipe that all off real quickly before it hardens. We don't usually mill wood, but I made this set up simply so that I could uh, get a perfectly flat surface on this uh, glued up saddle on this uh, pattern. And also it was just a little bit too high, so I'm taking about a quarter inch off. And uh, I probably should run the cutter a little bit faster, but I have to be real careful when I come to the end so I don't split it out. Also notice that I protected the surface where I uh, have clamped it. This will be kind of a rough surface, so I will sand it when I'm done, but then too, the final aluminum casting will be machined as well, so finish won't matter too much. At long last, the pattern is done. If you think this video is long, you ought to have been here to make the thing. Now, the line that you see here by my thumb is called the parting line. And when taken apart, notice that the pins are now installed to align the two halves. This is called the parting plane. And when it's in the mold, and the, we've got two halves of the mold, and they're taken apart, that's called the parting plane, or the parting line. And uh, that's what connects the two halves of the mold, or the two halves of the pattern. Now, uh, I'm not going to paint this. I probably should varnish it so it doesn't absorb any of the oil from the oil sand. But if you're using water-based sand, you know, you would want this to have some kind of finish on it so it wouldn't absorb the the water and possibly separate separate the glue joints. There are, are colors that uh, the American Foundryman Society has uh, decided upon to paint patterns and different parts of the pattern are to be painted certain colors. For instance, the core prints that my hand is on would be a different color than the rest of the pattern. Some patterns have <coughs> movable or replaceable parts and they would be painted a certain uh, color. Okay. That's enough uh, of the pattern making for a while, and uh, we'll have one more installment in this video, and that will be uh, the making of the core. So I'm going to show you how to mix up the sand and to uh, gas the core and take it out of the core box, and that will be uh, our next and final chapter. I guess I failed to show the, all of the patterns together. We have the head and then the bottom of the cylinder. And this is the uh, crank. And I put a little hub on that. And I still need to put uh, some uh, fillet in there. I didn't do that yet. But everything is tapered and that's done. I probably should put a counterweight on this also. I'm not sure if I need a hub on there, but I went ahead and put one so I got some way to fasten it onto the shaft. And there's that fillet after it's been sanded.